Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this TP-Link TAPO Smart Wi-Fi Multicolor Light Strip. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon, and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So here it says 16 million colors, has custom color zones, durable PU coating, says no hub required, works with ALEXA, works with Hey G-O-O-G-L-E. This has two strips that are 5 meters each, or 2 by 16. 16.4 feet, so it's a little over 32 feet long. It can sync to sound. We look on the side, it says multicolor, light segments, schedule and timer, voice control, app control, cuttable. Color is RGB LED. Nominal lifetime is 25,000 hours. The light strip dimensions are 5,000 by 10 by 3 millimeters. 120 volt, 60 hertz. Power consumption is 42 watts. Wi Fi connection is BGN 2.4 gigahertz, so it doesn't appear to support 5 gigahertz. So it comes with the strips and the power adapter. Here it says infinite colors and warmth. Set the mood and create the perfect ambiance. Smart control, manage the lights with the tap of your mobile device. Save your moods. Preset your favorite light moods for any scenario. And in the back, it kind of says the same things. So let's get this open. So here the LED lights are on reels. Here's a quick start guide. It says to download the Tapo app, press the plus, choose light strips, select the model, then follow the directions in the app to complete the setup. There's a control button. It says press once to turn your light strip on or off. Press twice to switch the preset lighting effects. Press and hold for five seconds to reset the Wi-Fi settings. Press and hold for 10 seconds to restore factory settings. Here's some installation tip. It says only cut the exceeded length along the cut lines of the light strip after unplugging the light strip. Avoid any sharp corners or turns behind the LED beads so they Show different ways to mount these but you don't want sharp turns there. Install your light strip. Choose a location that avoids static and eases away from splashing water. Find a clean, dry, and smooth surface and wipe off the dust. Peel away the 3M adhesive backing and take it out bit by bit. Stick the light strip and press it down for 10 to 15 seconds. Secure the controller with adhesive pads. Do not move it to another place after it is attached. Plug in the power adapter on your light strip. So here we have the power adapter. The output on this is 12 volts at 3.3 amps. And here we have the control button and the cable to connect the LED strips to. And then we have some self-adhesive pads. That's it's probably for this, yes. So this allows you to attach the controller to something. So you put these double stick pads on here, and then if you mounted this in your kitchen, you could mount this on a wall or under the cabinet or something. The power will plug in the end of this controller. Let's get this out of here. Let's get these open. So here are the strips. These have a rubberized coating on them. Now these are IP44 rated for the strip portion, but not the connectors. So that is to help protect it in like a kitchen area if it were to get splashed with some water. So you can see the chips here. Looks like there's some control chips on here also. And then if you cut this, you want to cut this at these marks with the scissor icon. Then on the back we have adhesive. It looks like a 3M9080A double stick adhesive. And you can kind of see the thickness here with that coating on it to protect the LEDs. So let me get these connected up. Now this says do not used while they're rolled up so I will unroll these a bit. I think that's because you don't want them to overheat. Okay, so now I want to connect these up, and you'll see there's an arrow on the strip itself, and there's an arrow on the connector, so you want to make sure those are pointing each other. Then line up the pins in the connector, press it together, do that on both strips here. Okay, I'll plug in the power and I'll plug that in. So I've already downloaded the Tapo app. You can go to your app store and search for it and you can find it. So in the Tapo app, I'm going to hit the plus button in the upper right corner. On the left, I'm going to choose light strips. If we look at the bottom corner of the box, it says Tapo L92010. So I'll choose the Tapo L920. It says connect the power adapter, controller, and light strip before powering it up. I'll hit next. It says plug in your light strip and wait about 15 seconds or until the orange and green lights move along the light strip. So that's what's happening right now. It says keep your mobile device close to the light strip throughout the setup. I'll hit already orange and green. Now if it's not orange and green, it has instructions on that page you can tap on. It says go to your tablet's Wi-Fi settings and join your Tapo device network, Tapo light strip, then return to the app. So I'll do that. At the bottom, I'll hit I'm already connected. It says found it. It says enter your network password. So here you can select your Wi-Fi network. So what this will do is it will assign your Wi-Fi credentials to the LED lights. So I'll hit next here since I have the information already in here. It says TAPA will connect to the network. I'll hit next. It says name your device. The default is smart LED strip. I'll name this cabinet. I'll hit next. In location name, I'll say kitchen. I'll hit next. Then you can have an icon for it. So there's one here with a little sink and some cabinets. I'll hit next. It says you're almost done. Make sure you have the latest firmware. I'll hit check firmware. It says new firmware is available. This may take a few minutes. I'll hit update now. 
It says your Tapo device is up to date and ready to use. Enjoy. It says skip or precautions for use. Let's check those out real quick. This talks about cutting along the strips. And this talks about how to use the button. So I'll say got it. So here we have this on my app now with my cameras. I'll tap this. It has a little tutorial here. It says tap to switch the preset settings. Hit next. It says tap again to edit the preset settings. I'll hit got it. So I can tap through these. And as you can see, it will change the color of the light as I tap through them. If I tap them again, I can change the color of the presets. So say this one, I want to be a yellow color at, let's say, 50% brightness. So hit check, and here we have yellow at 50% brightness. Like next to that, we have a full brightness yellow. So let's go up to the gear in the upper right for the settings. Here we can change the settings like the icon, the name, and location. Here's default state is on. It says when the light strip is turned on from the app or power source, it will go to this default state. So it's currently set to last on state. So if you have this on a wall switch and you turn this off with the wall switch and turn it back on, it will turn back on to the last state it was on. So that's very handy. Here we have light strip length. So you can change that if you cut your strip down. Here's light on off gradually. So this will tell it to turn on and off with a fade. Let's see if we can do that. So I'll go back to the main screen. I'll hit the power button. So now you can see them fading off. Tap it again. They're fading to turn on. I'm going to turn that off for now. We have device info that has our IP address and firmware, your firmware update, placement guide, and control button explanations. So if you lose your instructions, you can go in the app and read through all that. So on the bottom, we have sync to sound. So I'll tap that. So it says to keep this in the foreground to ensure audio reception. Connect your mobile device to the same Wi-Fi network as your Tapo lighting device. I'll say got it. Okay, so I'll hit play. So now as I talk, you'll see this is changing. So if you have music playing, this will synchronize the light to the music. And it looks like we can change the color maybe, have a feature color. And here's the brightness. We can change that if we want to have it dimmer. So if you have this mounted around a bar or maybe your stereo, maybe behind some speakers or something, you can set this to audio sync. And then if you have a party, you can have it sync to the music. So that's a nice feature. So there's a little warning here saying it will be disabled if I leave this area. Next on the bottom, we have effects. So here we have the colors. But down below it has color painting. I'll hit create new. It says choose a color, then tap or swipe along the blocks. Color your lighting strip. So I'll say color, say blue. So let me do like a Independence Day theme. We'll do red, white, and let's see, blue. Save that. I'll tap on it. And here we have that. So I didn't do the whole thing because I just wanted to test it. So I'll hit edit at the top. I'll go back into that and I'll complete the pattern here. Okay, so now we have this pattern here. You can see I have red, white, and blue. So I did three blocks. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it looks like every block was three LEDs. So that's a cool feature to allow you to make custom patterns. So under color painting, we have customized effects. I'll tap that. So let's try these out. It says select an effect and choose the colors you prefer. So we have Aurora, Bubbling Cauldron, Candy Cane, Christmas, Flicker, Grandma's Christmas Lights, Hanukkah, Haunted Mansion, Icicle, Lightning, Ocean, Rainbow, Raindrop, Spring, Sunrise, Sunset, and Valentine's. Let's look at the, let's look at the Aurora. It looks like every time I click this, it changes it to different colors. Okay, because it's set to random color. That's interesting. And then I think I can drag these around to customize. Okay, so it looks like I need to save this to view it. Let's try that. Okay, and then I'll tap it. Let me turn this light off here. So here we can see the light is moving along the strip here. Let's try a different one. Let's try bubbling cauldron. So here there's kind of a fade effect. Let's look at candy cane. That sounds neat. Okay, so here you can see it lighting up along the light strip. Let's take a look at the flicker. Well, this is more of a fade effect. So this is meant to kind of simulate candles. Let's try lightning. I'm curious what that is. Oh, that's very cool. 
So it looks like it's kind of randomly flashing certain LEDs. Sometimes it's a few, sometimes it's a lot. So it's kind of simulating lightning. That's neat. So below the customized effects, we have predefined effects. So here we have daylight. So that's a very bright white. And then we have Aurora, bubbling cauldron. So these are a lot of the effects under the customized effects. We can just customize them under that. But we have a few more here. We have like rainbow, raindrop. So that's a very nice effect there. Could be very relaxing. Spring. sunrise sunset so what i'm guessing those are doing is they're starting off bright or dim and then going to the opposite so for sunrise it would start off dim and then go bright and sunset it will start off bright and then go dim and we have valentine's there so that's really neat it has all these customized lighting effects then we have schedule it says add a schedule to set when tapo device is on or off regularly so I'll hit the plus here so here we can turn these on at sunrise or sunset so if you had these in a bedroom you could have them wake you up in the morning maybe on that sunrise effect mode so you can tell it to turn these off or on at a specific time and then you can tell it which days of the week to do it so this is a pretty standard schedule for setting the lights up now if we swipe up it's kind of hard to see here there's a little arrow there pointing down if we swipe up there are more modes here so there's an away mode it says set a period of time during which tapo will be randomly turned on or off to make it seem like someone is home so if you have these around your bar when you're having a party you might have it in party mode but when you leave you can set away mode and then it will turn them on or off and it will seem like there's activity in your house and we have timer so you can have it turn off after so much time then below that we have some stats we have the runtime is 0.2 hours energy usage is less than 0.1 kilowatts and then we have seven days or 30 days so that's really nice we have favorites device sharing and feedback so those are the basic lights now in the tapo app you can go to smart actions here and you can set up routines and automation you can connect this up with ALEXA or Google Smart Devices. So we have shortcuts here, automation. So we can add automation. You can add triggers, things like that. So that could make this very powerful. So you can have this so when you arrive home, you could have it set up a scene for a movie or a party. Once you get into programming devices like this, the sky's the limit on what you can make it do. So that's the app. Let's take a look at the button real quick. So we can tap this once or twice to turn it on or off. So if we double tap it, it's going to change the presets. So I don't remember exactly what I put in for all of these. So those are the Tapo Smart Wi-Fi Multicolor LED Light Strip. So when you're talking about light strips, you have the strips themselves, and then you have the app integration. And I really like the build quality of these strips. They feel very sturdy. They have that IP44 rating on them. So these would be protected to use in some place like a kitchen. The color of the light looks really nice on these. But the thing that makes these really powerful is the app. And I'm very impressed with the app integration. I like that you can customize the pattern on this. So if someone's having a birthday party, you could put, say, their two favorite colors alternated on these. It also has the different patterns and modes. So there's pretty much infinite ways to customize these to your liking. So if you're setting these up in a kitchen, you'd want to set this up where you can plug it in and then you want to run one strand one direction and then one the other. So you'd want the controller in the middle and then you could mount the controller somewhere within reach. Although if you have an assistant, you would probably want to set this up with your assistant so you could just tell it to say turn your under cabinet lights on and it would turn your lights on without having to touch anything. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.